10 years. Right after I treated my dad, started looking up thyroid problems, uh, I realized that we live in the middle of the goiter belt in Michigan. Our soil is one of the most iodine deficient areas of the entire world. And uh, there was not a mention of iodine in med school, besides there's enough in iodine salt. And I asked the med students that, did they have any therapies with iodine, and you know, no, nothing's changed in 10 years. And I started treating people with iodine 10 years ago, and I was using a form of iodine called iodide, D-I-D-E, -E, and I'll take you through what that is. And iodide is the most common form of iodine available in health food stores. It's in liquid form. It's in drop form. SSKI is a form of iodide. And although I didn't see negative effects with patients, I didn't see positive effects with people. And I kind of let it go after a while, although I would go to conferences and ask people about iodine, and there was never any testing available, and that was part of the problem, too. I never really knew what anyone's level was, although I suspected everybody was low with it. So about nine months ago, a researcher in California developed a test for iodine levels, and it was a little paragraph in one of my alternative journals that I read there's an iodine test now available. And I called this gentleman and I said, told him that um, I live in Michigan. I got a whole practice of thyroid patients. And he was excited because I live in Michigan and he knew about the soil. And we did a study. And I'm gonna, I have the studies which I'll show you. And so far in testing people, um, and we've tested over 150 people right now, 95% of people are test, between 92 and 95% are testing markedly low in iodine. It's very rare that somebody tests normal in iodine levels. And we're seeing numbers nationally start to come in, not as high as in Michigan, but very high. You know, well over 80% of people are testing very low in iodine. Um, and I'll take you through why iodine can be an effective treatment when it's given the right way and um, how it interacts with all the hormones of the body and helps the immune system work better. Now, my first book, The Miracle of Natural Hormones, um, relates to this because iodine is necessary to produce all the hormones of the body. My second book, Overcoming Arthritis, relates to that because you cannot fight infections without adequate amounts of iodine levels. And I talk about in that book why people with arthritis get, I, I think an underlying cause of the arthritis many times is infections. Third book was Overcoming Thyroid Disorders. The thyroid gland certainly can't work without adequate amounts of iodine levels. So this iodine put a lot of pieces of the puzzle together. So, iodine. Iodine is a trace element that's found in small amounts in the human body. It's usually found in seawater and sea organisms, particularly found in seaweed. Soil near the ocean can contain larger amounts of iodine. Plants grown on iodine containing soil will have adequate iodine levels. However, plants grown on iodine depleted soils will have inadequate iodine levels. And iodine can combine with salt, that's why they put it in salt as iodine salt. So, why look at iodine? Iodine deficiency is a worldwide problem. The consequences of iodine deficiency, the most common one known is goiter. Um, the, the, the other problems with iodine deficiency is autoimmune thyroid illness. Now, 20 years ago, doctors did not see Hashimoto's and Graves' disease patients. They weren't there. You just didn't see it out there. Now it's an epidemic. The numbers are skyrocketing. And one of the reasons they're skyrocketing is iodine levels have fallen in the last 20 to 30 years and are leading to this problem, and I'll walk you through that. Thyroid cannot work correctly in an iodine deficiency state, and hypothyroidism many times can develop. So you can develop hypo or hyperthyroid problems with iodine deficiency. There's increased risk of breast, prostate, endometrial, ovarian, uterine cancer should be in there as well. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, I have it in there as endometrial cancer. Infertility. Um, this might relate to the thyroid because the thyroid is not going to work correctly. The ovaries are one of the main uh, glands that concentrate iodine. It cannot work correctly in an iodine deficient state. Mental impairment, reduced intellectual ability, and ADD are all associated with iodine deficiency. The World Health Organization claims iodine deficiency is the world's greatest single cause of preventable mental retardation. One third of the world's population lives in an iodine deficient area. It includes 129 countries, including our own. 72% of the world's population, including many of our own in this, in this country, is affected by iodine deficiency. There's a decreased childhood survival rate in iodine deficient areas. And neonatal mortality declines over 50% when iodine deficiency is rectified. It's a really important substance. There's a survey the government does every 10 years. It's called the National Health and Nutrition Survey. And 
from, that should be 1970, not 1971. In 1970 to 2000, so over 30 years, the National Health and Nutrition Survey showed iodine levels declined 50% in the United States. Now remember, does anyone know when we iodized salt? 1920s. So we had iodized salt well before this, but something's been happening in the last 30 years that iodine levels have fallen 50%, and I'll talk to you why that's the case. But the consequences of this are that during this time, increases in thyroid illnesses, including hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's, Graves' disease, thyroid cancer. Thyroid cancer is increasing at exponential rates right now. Cancer of the breast, prostate, endometrium, and ovaries have all been elevated. And all of the above conditions can be caused by iodine deficiency. The research is very clear with that. Where is iodine found in the body? Every single cell in the body contains and utilizes iodine. It's primarily concentrated in the glandular system, such as the thyroid glands, the adrenal glands, the ovaries, the breasts. Um, the thyroid gland contains the largest amount of iodine. And there's other tissues in the body that contain large amounts of iodine. The breasts are number two in the body. Stomach, the skin, salivary glands, cerebral spinal fluid, which bathes our brain. Stomach, the lacrimal glands, put saliva in the mouth. Thymus gland, which is below the breastbone, all contain significant amounts of iodine. So if this iodine level has fallen 50% in the last 30 years, it's going to affect all these systems of the body and more. How do you ingest iodine? Well, it's a trace element. It's not very common in most foods, especially where we live. It's in ocean foods. It's in a lot of those fish that I listed there, cod, sea bass, haddock, and perch. It's in sea vegetables, such as seaweed. And iodine can be found in food products if iodine is added to animal feed or the food source, such as salt. When we add it to salt, we'll get a little bit of iodide. But I'm, I'm going to show you why I don't think it's enough. And certainly that national health study shows it's not enough. So this was the first 24 patients. Well, after I read that little um, article on iodine, and the researcher's name was Dr. Abraham, and I called him, and he, I, he said to me, let's do a study. So we did the first 24 patients that walked in the door, and I checked their iodine levels. Where that red line is is when their body has enough iodine in it, and you can see out of the first 24 people, 22 had enough iodine in them. 20 didn't. These were the next 26 patients that came in. All these people were deficient in it. Now, these patients were mixture patients. I didn't screen anyone out. Many of them had thyroid problems. Many of them had Hashimoto's and or, and or Graves' disease. Many of them had other health problems. Some were healthy. I was in the mix of this first 24 that was very low. I don't have, I have hypothyroidism, but I don't have any other medical issues. So, so the RDA for iodine. Now, the RDA, uh, I'm not sure what the RDA stands for. Um, maybe rats, drugs, and assumptions. Uh, but the RDA in the 1920s was set up to prevent goiter only. And if that's what we want the RDA for, the RDA has done its job because a small amount of iodide added to iodide salt does prevent goiter. However, it doesn't give the body enough iodine for all those rest of those tissues. Number one, it's not giving enough for the thyroid itself, but it gives enough to prevent goiter, but not enough for the thyroid to work correctly. And it leaves the rest of the body, the breast, the prostate, the uterus, the ovaries, in a deficient state. Um, there was no real concern when the RDA was set up about the rest of the body's needs for iodine. It was only to prevent goiter. And I, I'm saying this, this level of iodine that we're taking in right now is inadequate not only to the thyroid but to the rest of the body as well. So here's the RDA for iodine. The adult male and female are 150 micrograms per day. Pregnancy and breastfeeding, a little bit more iodine is necessary. The Japanese take in 100 times the cells in, in uh, mainland Japanese. Now, coastal Japanese who live near the coast of Japan take in significantly more. It's never been measured. They don't know. But the Japanese are taking in 100 times more than we are, and they have significantly less problems of the thyroid, the breast, the uterus, the rest of it. Now, again, I have some slides on this. And this slide shows you where iodine binds to different areas of the body. Now, there are two types of iodine in our bodies. There's iodine and iodide. The salt form is iodide with a D. So what that means is that the 
iodine, the iodide is the reduced form. It has an extra, extra electron in it. The oxidized form is called iodine, D-I-N-E. Now, most of the health food stores sell iodine in the product of iodide on the right. And what that does, the thyroid primarily binds iodide, the salivary glands prom pr um, bind iodide, and the skin binds iodide. However, the breast, the prostate, and the stomach don't. So if we're going to use an iodine supplement, why not use a 